Hey, welcome to the video. This video is about uh, living with tectonic hazards. We'll be covering gateway one, um, the various causes, as well as some of the key landforms at the various types of plate boundaries. So now, natural hazards are basically tectonic or climatic in nature. Uh, they are naturally occurring events that threaten human lives and cause damage to property in different areas of the earth. Now this map actually shows the distribution of some of the Earth's natural hazards, both climatic as well as volcanic and tectonic. So they are all around the Earth itself and the distribution is very diverse and spread out. What you see here is the internal structure of the Earth with the solid core, the molten mantle layer and the solid crust which we are living on. Now the crust is the cooler layer, the mantle and the core are superheated so this is the cross section for you to take a look. Now the crust is not uh, a continuous slab, it is broken up into pieces and these pieces of the crust are known as our tectonic plates itself. There are two main types, one is the oceanic crust while the other is the continental crust. So if you look at it, the oceanic crust is very very much denser, it's found beneath deep oceans and it is a lot thinner than your continental crust. Continental crust on the other side, on the other hand, is between 35 and 70 kilometers in thickness, a lot thicker, but it does consist of lighter rocks, including uh, like granite, so um, it will not subduct. It is of lower density than oceanic crust. Okay, This concept of density is very important in the explanation of the type of landforms that we see at different plate boundaries subsequently. So please remember, oceanic crust is denser, continental crust is less dense. The diagram here actually illustrates why the plates actually move around. So within the mantle itself, because the mantle is a moving solid, uh, it's not a liquid, huh? it's a solid that is in a state that is similar to Nutella, right? So it's actually moving. So within the, the, the molten state of this mantle material, convection currents can occur. There's a difference in temperature between the parts that's nearer to the core, which is hotter, and the part that's touching the crust, the bottom of the crust, which is cooler. So with this difference in temperature, you actually have convection currents that are occurring within the mantle itself. Together with these convectional currents to continually push or pull different parts of the crust along is the concept of slap pull force. This is when you have oceanic plates subducting and when it comes down, it actually pushes the rest of the plate behind it, reinforcing the downward motion of the convection currents. So together, slap pull force and the convection currents result in this ever continuous movement that is present, which uh, leads to tectonic plate movement on the crust itself. This map here shows you the different plate margins that are found on planet Earth itself. Now with uh, divergence on one end of the plate, you will be pushing it at the other end into another plate itself. So this shows you where the arrows, the small red arrow shows what type of margin this is. Is it a divergent margin where the plates are moving away from one another? Or is it a convergent margin where the plates are moving together and creating new landforms? Now, this is a very important map, so you need to know where these plates are located and because they will serve as examples later on as we look at the different landforms. So if you have a landform that you're going to quote, you need to be able to quote which plate this is uh, it's a, it's moving together or moving apart as a result forming this landform. So there will be five landforms that in total that we'll be looking at. So we'll start with the divergent ones where your plates are moving, uh, are being torn apart. So divergent plate landforms normally refer to uh, plate margins that have fractures along the middle or, to the, or somewhere along the plate margin itself, uh, the plate itself, and is moving apart, tearing it into two pieces. So you can have oceanic, oceanic divergence in this case here. As a result of that, you will form a ridge in the middle of it, uh, oceanic ridge. The most uh, common example listed for this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where the Eurasian plate and the North American plate are moving away from one another. A similar thing can happen to continental plates. So if your continental plate is being pulled apart, like in this case here where the African plate, the Somalian side and the Nubian side are moving apart from one another due to fracturing occurring in the crust and magma rising up, you will form a rift valley 
okay, in the middle, the Great African Rift Valley, the Rift System, is one area where you find continental, continental plate divergence and this occurring. Divergent plate boundaries are also known by another name, they are also called constructive margins because you have new land or new sea floor being formed. The margin that we can encounter are convergent plate boundaries where you have two plates coming together and destroying something so these are also known as destructive margins. Now when you have an oceanic plate meeting another oceanic plate, both are dense but one will be denser in terms of density and the denser plate will then subduct which means it enters into the mantle area and then it fractures and it melts. Take a close look at this diagram here, there is something that is rising up, point number 3, that is basically the part of the oceanic plate that has melted and as a result it's being released and it tries to force its way up through fractures or faults that are found on the other oceanic plate and when it does find an area where it can emerge, it will slowly build up and form a volcano. These are called submarine rift volcanoes. Example of where you can find one such oceanic oceanic conversion plate boundary is where the Pacific plate meets the Philippine plates. As a result, you have the Mariana Trench forming as a deep sea trench at the point of subduction, as well as the Marina Islands, which are basically volcanic islands that have emerged from uh, being subduction reef volcanoes. To we'll cover continental continental convergence, now when continental plates meet one another, they are both buoyant and they will not subduct. I repeat, they will not subduct. So the example that is given to illustrate this point is where your Indian plate meets the Eurasian plate. Uh, it takes uh, uh, many millions of years okay, for this to happen. But when you have two very buoyant plates, continental plates meeting one another, they will push together and they will force uh, upward upfolding, which is massive and, and very impressive, forming very large mountain ranges, large four mountain ranges. Particular plate boundary, the mountain range we're looking at, we're looking at is the um, Himalayan mountain range where you can find Mount Everest, the highest peak on Earth. Now, once again, I want to repeat, there is no subduction when you have this continental plates meeting continental plates. No subduction. So even when in drawing of the diagram, you must not show that there's subduction. So I would highlight this point here. If you look at where I'm pointing to, this point here should not exist. Uh, the diagram is technically not correct. Do not draw this diagram. Draw the one that your teachers have shown you in school. This diagram here, the subducting part is not a continental plate. Eh? Note what the, the labeling is. The thing that comes down is an ancient oceanic plate because continental plates do not subduct. Okay, the final destructive margin that we're going to talk about is the oceanic continental plate margin where you have convergence of the oceanic plate against your continental plate. Um, what you see here is the Australian plate meeting the Eurasian plate forming the Barisan mountain range as well as the Sunda trench. Now the landforms that are formed here are very very similar to when you have oceanic and oceanic converging. However, it's important to note that because you have a continental plate, there will be more upfalls and more uh, dramatic landforms form. So you, besides having volcanoes, subduction volcanoes, you will also have four mountains forming in such boundaries. Clearly, in this kind of areas, right, uh, whether it becomes a volcano or it stays as a four mountain depends on whether there are fracturing that occurs in the folding process. If there is fracturing, then there is a way for the escaping magma to rise through the crust itself and erupt. So over time, with multiple subsequent eruptions, you will form volcanoes on top of four mountains. Last uh, plate boundary that we're going to look at are transform plate boundaries. Now this particular one, the diagram is very unlikely that will ask you to draw a fully labeled diagram because this is the simplest diagram that there is to draw. So uh, what they tend to do is they tend to show you the diagram and ask you what's occurring at this particular plate boundary. Now the one that's shown here is where the Eurasian plate and the Anatolian plate are sliding against one another. So when you talk about transform plate boundaries, you're not talking about convergence or divergence, they're actually sliding horizontally against one another. Now this movement results in a lot of, before they actually slip past one another, there's a lot of friction and a lot of stored energy as they try to move in opposite directions. And when they can finally overcome that, there's a massive release in energy. Now, when you think about it, when there's a massive release in energy in the land below us, 
as the occupants on the crust itself, we feel it as earthquakes. So if you do live near one of these transform plate boundaries, either the Anatolian one or the one in America, which is your San Andreas fault, you will be in an area where you tend to have a lot of earthquakes happening all the time. For this particular plate boundary here, the Anatolian one, the countries that are very very directly affected are actually Turkey. So whenever you Turkey experiences an earthquake, it is normally due to a slippage in this plate boundary here. So if you look very carefully, right, the capital of Turkey, Istanbul, is right next to the boundary itself. So whenever there is a slippage in the boundary, when the when the stock energy overcomes the friction of the that's locking the two plates in place, you will have massive earthquakes happening. Uh, is it a wise thing to build a city here? No. However, when in terms of city building, many times they were built without the knowledge that this is actually on an earthquake zone. So after it's been developed, it's very hard to say removal. Los Angeles is in a very similar situation where it's actually built very near the San Andreas Fault. Certainly for this section, you need to remember how to draw all five of the diagrams, how to explain them. If you, are, you also need to know how to create a fully annotated uh, diagram to explain what happens at each of these particular four locations. Uh, in terms of remembering uh, content, you need to remember the plates that are in play leading to the formation of the particular landform you're talking about. So on top of the different landforms, you need to remember the name of, you need to remember the, the name of the plates that are uh, affect and result in this landform. So things like your Sunda Trench uh, is between the Australian plate and the Eurasian plate, the Himalayans between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. So these are examples of what you need to remember. Uh, diagrams itself, you need to learn how to draw. Uh, fully annotated ones, meaning you are giving annotations about the processes that are in place. So you're basically explaining why the plate is moving in this way, what happens as a result of the subduction itself, how the landforms are in particular are formed, where we've drawn in your diagrams. So we have come to the end of Gateway 1. Um, Content-wise, this is one of the most heavy gateways in this chapter. So stay tuned uh, or check out the other videos for Gateway 2, which is split into three parts, as well as Gateway 3 of uh, living with tectonic hazards.